Once again, this is Dr. Gertie Chimeka Anyamwoke, infectious disease specialist practicing in Baton Rouge and Gonzales, Louisiana. Today's date is April 2nd, 2020, and this is another honest update on coronavirus disease 2019. Let me start by saying that even though this coronavirus disease 2019 pandemic is very concerning, there is no need for us to panic. What we need to do is to stay calm and follow the health directives of your local authorities to help mitigate the effects of this pandemic. I would like to reiterate at this point some of the various advice I had given in my previous recordings. Wash your hands frequently. Use hand sanitizers and disinfecting wipes on your hands and other surfaces when possible. Do not shake anyone's hands. Cough and sneeze in a manner to protect yourself and others. Stay home. Maintain social distancing for at least two meters or six feet apart. In addition to the above measures, if you absolutely have to go out, like to make grocery rounds at Walmart or other places, please use face masks, especially if you can. There is a current shortage of face masks in the United States and some other parts of the world. Make your own face mask if possible. These homemade face masks may be substandard, but they will be better than nothing at all. You can check reliable sources on the web for how to make good quality face mask. If you wear a face mask, Follow the following measures so that you do not contaminate the mask and inadvertently you can contaminate your face. Keep your hands away from your face and know how to remove the face mask without contaminating your face. The next thing is if you have COVID-19 symptoms or you have been diagnosed of COVID-19, how long before you stop self-quarantine? Like I mentioned in my previous recording, there are two ways of doing this. The first one is if you are not tested to find out if you are negative or positive, you make sure you've had no fever for three days without taking medications like Tylenol or paracetamol, that your symptoms have improved, your symptoms like cough, shortness of breath, sneezing, and you make sure you've had at least seven to 14 days from the beginning of your symptoms. The second way to get out of quarantine is if you get tested you have to be negative at least two consecutive times, at least 24 hours apart. Make sure you have no fevers without using Tylenol or paracetamol. Make sure your symptoms have improved. Symptoms like cough, shortness of breath, fatigue, sneezing. The next question is, people ask me about pregnant women and breastfeeding mothers. I would say, at this time, we do not know enough to say if the risk is higher in pregnant women. However, pregnancy usually constitutes an at-risk state. We are giving the same advice to pregnant women and breastfeeding mothers like we give to the general population. However, if a breastfeeding mother is positive for COVID-19 or suspects symptoms of COVID-19, 
she should wash her hands before touching your baby, before touching the breast pump, before touching the bottle parts. Wear a face mask if possible to breastfeed. Clean all parts of the pump and other parts of the bottles after each use. The next question I get asked, especially by healthcare workers, is protective gears for healthcare workers. Please note that our healthcare workers have to put themselves in danger every day during this COVID-19 pandemic. And they are at the risk of contracting the coronavirus disease 2019 themselves while treating their patients. If this happens, the healthcare worker can inadvertently infect another patient who did not previously have COVID-19. Wearing protective equipment help give the healthcare worker confidence to help take care of the patients. My people, given the fact that 25% of people infected with coronavirus 2019 disease have absolutely no symptoms, there is no absolute way of knowing who is infected if we have not tested the person. Remember that the same 25% of people with no symptoms at all may proceed to infect others if proper care is not taken. Therefore, I will beg you not to be offended during this coronavirus disease 2019 pandemic in case you get to a healthcare facility and the healthcare workers wear the personal protective equipment to treat every patient. Again, this is because they do not know who is infected until proven otherwise. The next question I guess get asked often is, when will it be safe to have large meetings again and for society to go back to normalcy? My answer, testing, 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 will probably be a big help if we can get this going in a massive scale. This may actually help the society in general eventually get back to normalcy. For example, if we test most people and know their status, then the positives could be quarantined and we can make sure they test negative prior to getting out of quarantine, thereby decreasing their risk of infecting others. People ask me about vaccine development. Please note, there is presently no vaccine for COVID-19. If we are lucky, we may get a vaccine in 12 to 18 months. Again, that is if we are lucky. That brings us to the question of finding a cure for COVID-19. I have read some, albeit very small study or report that suggested transfusing critically ill patients with COVID-19, transfusing them with plasma uh, that was gotten from people that have previously had COVID-19, recovered from it, and you can get their plasma by getting blood from these patients, use special means to extract the plasma with the covalent antibodies for COVID-19. It seems promising. However, this may not be a widely available treatment for most people at this time. I personally will advise us all to take our multivitamin, to take our vitamin C, even zinc oxide, and my suggested dose will be between 50 milligrams to 220 milligrams daily. That if we have fever during this period, treat that fever by drinking plenty of fluids, taking Tylenol or paracetamol, um, ibuprofen is suspected that it may not agree with the virus. However, ibuprofen has not been shown clearly. I mean, there is no clear data to support that assertion. I would say, if you cannot find Tylenol or paracetamol because people have finished buying them, take ibuprofen if you have to. About chloroquine and hydrochloroquine, plus or minus exitromycin. I would say that the jury is still out on these drugs as treatment or as prophylaxis 
for COVID-19. This is because we do not have at this time good enough data to support this one way or the other. However, full disclosure, I have been using these medications on my COVID-19 patients that are admitted to the hospital. Please, if you have coronavirus disease 2019, or you suspect that you have the disease or the symptoms, or you've been exposed to someone with the disease, follow the directives of your local health authorities or call your doctor before going to the health facility so that the facility can be ready for you. If your symptoms worsen, you can call for medical emergency. It's important that at this time of social and physical dis distancing, we remain in touch with our families, our friends, and others in our community to prevent social isolation, emotional problems, and possible depression. Again, please look for information from reliable sources like the World Health Organization, CDC, NIH, and others in the US. In Nigeria, the NCDC, and the local health authorities wherever you are. My people, let us remember that tough times don't last, but tough people do. This too shall pass. Let us not panic. Let us not panic. With so much love, I remain Dr. Getty Chimeka Anyangwoke, infectious disease specialist practicing in Baton Rouge and Gonzales, Louisiana. Stay updated with future content. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.